Any questions? Yes. Okay, let's get to questions and then we're gonna wrap it up because I know this was heavy. This is very, this is probably a lot more complicated than a lot of people are used to in the sense of skincare, but this is what to expect from isomers. We're gonna go deep down. We're gonna treat you at a level that is, a, you know, we expect everybody to be at a certain level of understanding. We're not going, we, we, we make it as simple as possible, but at the same way, we want to expose you to as much information as possible so you can see and understand the pathways. And we're not just going to try to sugarcoat things. We want to really show you right. what's going on. Question. Yes. What causes vitiligo? Ah, very good, good point. We, I briefly mentioned it. You look at these melanocytes, and I remember I told you the melanocyte, uh, the melanocytes, um, the cells that actually create the melanosomes, there's one to every 36 cells roughly. So these are responsible for coloring of this. So now imagine if for some reason my body's defense mechanism, my immune system, gets the wrong information. It gets bad information. And this information is telling my immune system that these melanocytes are bad. You need to get rid of them. So your own immune system starts attacking these melanocytes and destroys them. In certain areas. In, 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 in specific areas. And then you get those white spots because there's no color. That's called vitiligo. There are times that there are some uh, the, um, medicinal ingredients with UV light that stimulates those stem cells to make more melanocytes. Uh, soraline, uh, soraline is one ingredient with UV light. This is a common therapy that some people have had good success with uh, vitiligo when they go under those medications and the, the cream uh, and then the ingestions and then UV light, it helps it to come back. But it's, it is a little bit of a hit and miss. It's not 100%. Next. How to get rid of melasma on brown skin? It's the same, there is no difference. The mechanism that I showed you is the same. So you need to go and really control a little bit of all those four processes. Right. So this is the chart that I'm gonna explain a little bit more. Next so week, next you, week we're gonna get into it even deeper. You need to have a, a multifunctional brightening product that works on all those levels. But also, but I think so, ingredients, so vitamin C won't be enough, but something like maybe an azelaic north of 14% is gonna be much more beneficial right. when you have melasma because that's actually what's used at 40% uh, and higher. They use it to treat tranexamic acid. That's another good one, yes. For melasma, yep. Products that you recommend for dark spots? I like glutathione. Listen, thiazone. look, look. <laughs> As isomers products or in general? I, our product, mm. I would recommend uh, our, our uh, glutathione. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, glutathione um, is also very good um, for freckled skin. Because when we go into this mechanism, so there's a part that goes to EU melanin and there's a part that goes to female melanin. So it's just imagine like a, like a river that d divides into two. One makes the pigmentation for red, yellow, and the other. And glutathione is the one that upregulates towards the regular pigmentation, not the red and yellow. But also, that's it what, also inhibits the overall pigmentation to some extent. And that's why I always talk about, like, I, I love glutathione, I love the glutathiosome, but it's actually better for brown skin, the glutathiosome. So if you had to choose between vitamin C and glutathiosome, or glutathione, I, and you have brown skin, I would pick glutathione, right? Because we understand this mechanism. So this is something that, again, it's personal preference, but when you understand more about the chemistry and you understand more about um, what you're turning on and off, but also color-wise, where did it go? Ah, nope. All right, I wanna, to go, I wanna go to the, yeah, I wanna, the, the, first, no, this first one, slide. this one. When, when you go, like, this is gonna give you more, like, this is going to be more for glutathione people, mm. more vitamin C people kind of idea. Mm. but. I always go this way because I think it gives much more uneven pigmentation overall. Right. I agree with Manuela 
I take it one more step, I go multi-level. So you want, when you look at this chart, you want to go something that, when you go across all these ingredients, something that covers all of them. Yeah. That's where you get the best result. Next. What about azelaic acid 20% to treat hyperpigmentation? All right, so let's talk about mechanisms. When we talked about these mechanisms that cause this uh, pigmentation. And they're talking hyperpigmentation is more red, right? Not only that, but uh, overall, we were talking about what tickles these uh, uh, melanocytes. So one of the things that tickles the melanocytes, and I'm gonna, I was gonna get to that next week, but since you asked the question, is, um, um, environmental stress and inflammation, mm -hmm. okay? So inflammation causes hyperpigmentation. And one of the things that azelaic acid is really good at is a great anti-inflammatory. Anti yeah. So uh, it, it will work to some extent, but it's not a guarantee because we don't know Where in here is your problem for pigmentation? So if that pigmentation is overstimulation here because of inflammation, you're gonna get good results. But if your problem is not because of that, you may be doing your skin a lot of good, but it may not necessarily address getting rid of that pigmentation completely. The difference between hyperpigmentation and melasma I think, in my opinion, is the level where the deep pigmentation is. Is it, is it more on the surface or is more less at the bottom? But honestly, it's both referring to hyperpigmentation, in my opinion. 